And then when we watched the episode in the editorial, we realized, oh my God, this episode makes no sense. Yeah. Multiverses are everywhere, and most of the time, they end up contradicting themselves. Disney, being the not-so-proud owner of Marvel and Star Wars, have fully embraced the concept as of late, with questionable results. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal! But it's easy to forget that they actually own a relatively well-received multiverse. Gravity Falls premiered during the summer of 2012, and it quite literally changed the cartoon landscape forever. I need to do laundry, but the title stuck with me. It's such a dumb, it's sort of a pun, it's not quite a pun. Alex Hirsch, Gravity Force's creator, went on to directly work on and heavily inspire a ton of other related Disney animated series like Star vs. the Forces of Evil, The Owl House, and Amphibia. Now, these four series have always subtly referenced each other's existence. I mean, there's an episode of Amphibia where an amphibian version of a mystery shark just exists for some reason, fully equipped with a frog version of Seuss and Grunkle Stan being voiced by Alex. Alex Hirsch himself. You've been licking yourself again, Frog Seuss! <laughs> Caught me again, Mr. Pond. But that's to be expected. Gravity Falls, Star vs. the Forces of Evil, The Outhouse, and Amphibia all share a ton of the same writers and staff, so it made sense that they'd be comfortable if adding in Easter eggs and sometimes even alternate universe versions of fan favorite characters. We've never had an official crossover episode between these four shows though, yet we're supposed to believe that the events that transpired inside of all of them were happening within the same multiverse and sometimes even at the exact same time. With two generally poorly received multiverses under Disney's belt, I thought it'd be really fun to take a closer look at the cartoon multiverse and put it to the test in order for us to figure out if all four of these Disney cartoons actually make sense in a shared multiverse. Because if somebody is interested in your idea, that's like the hardest thing to get right. Star vs. The Forces of Evil is surprisingly the show with the least connections to the other three series. Basically, while Gravity Falls, The Owl House, and Amphibia are generally agreed by Disney fans to be set on the same version of Earth, Star vs. The Forces of Evil appears to be set in another universe entirely, hence why it's called the Disney Cartoon Multiverse instead of the Disney Cartoon Universe. This makes sense for several reasons. For starters, the ending of Star vs. The Forces of Evil wasn't well received and left the series in a really awkward position. Canonically connecting the Earth with Muni during the show's finale pretty much confirms that the series has to have been set within an alternate universe. We know this because according to the Star vs. The Forces of Evil book titled Star and Mar Marco's Guide to Master in Every Dimension, we learned that the events of the series began sometime between 2014 and 2015. It would be impossible for the show to be set on the same earth as our other three series, unless humanity decided to collectively wipe out every trace of interdimensional life by the time that the events of Amphibia began between 2019 and 2020. Speaking about Amphibia, doesn't this thing from Star vs the Forces of Evil stuck to Eclipse's head look exactly like an alternate universe version of the core? Everything in Disney's cartoon multiverse begins with a beast with just one eye, also known as Bill Cipher. There's a sort of trope in fiction of this sort of godlike character who messes with the protagonist. Bill's triangular and seemingly flat form wasn't just for show. Trillions of years prior to the events of Gravity Falls, Bill Cipher was born in the second dimension. Here's where things get interesting. Bill described his original home as being a dimension of flat minds in a world with flat dreams. Bill Cipher would simply grow tired of living in the second dimension and when the moment was right, he liberated it by plunging it into burning chaos. By putting his world of everyone he's ever known, including his own parents. Yeah, the beast with just one eye apparently had parents. After conquering his world, Bill Cipher would eventually take over a mysterious and lawless gap between universes called Dimension Zero, also known as the Nightmare Realm. Now, Dimension Zero would be the place where Bill Cipher would meet his colorful assortment of friends and plot his escape into Gravity Falls. Dimension Zero would also be the place where Bill Cipher would spread his devastating influence on the Disney cartoon multiverse at large. It's important to remember that despite Bill Cipher's massive influence on the world, he was essentially powerless during this era. Due to the Nightmare Realm's lawlessness and lack of any consistent physics or rules, it was destined to collapse into itself eventually. Bill Cipher knew this and after coming to learn of a mysterious prophecy from the Nightmare Realm that stated that he would merge the lawless gap with the third dimension, Bill used what little power and influence that he had to bring his dreams into reality. 
For all of Bill Cipher's plotting and scheming, most of the damage that he caused would be relatively self-contained by the end of Gravity Falls. He was basically an otherworldly trickster who attempted to get gullible humans to summon him and kicks at his ultimate goal which was complete control over the multiverse. The Owl House is a fun addition to Disney's cartoon multiverse because both Alex Hirsch and Dana Teres have confirmed that either Clawthorn was in fact Grunkle Stan's ex-wife. This, along with a ton of other heavy easter eggs, means that everything should align perfectly between Gravity Falls and the Owl House, and it surprisingly does for the most part. In Gravity Falls Lost Legends, a canonical book written by Alex Hirsch himself, it was confirmed that Ford even knew about the Boiling Isles or went there himself at some point. Either way, he documented the Boiling Isles' existence within journal number 3. I mean, Bill Cipher could have told Ford about the Boiling Isles because the only other reliable access point to other worlds that we know of within their universe is the Calamity Box. Leaf, or as she would later be known, Lily Planter was a frog who became the head gardener of Newtopia. She was best friends with one of Amphibia's main antagonists, King Andreas. After Leaf suddenly comes into contact with the Calamity Box, she foresees an apocalyptic future for Amphibia, reasonably causing her to panic. Leaf seeing what would happen if her people kept using the devastating power of the Calamity Box eventually decides to steal it and hide it on Earth. It's unclear why Liv chose to hide it specifically on Earth or why she did such a terrible job hiding it, but despite her best efforts, her premonition would still come to pass. King Andreas and the Core's plan was to harness the power of the Calamity Box to conquer different worlds, which is hilarious because this stand no chance whatsoever against the residents of the Boiling Isles, but I digress. The Owl House is hands down the series with the most powerful entities. We're talking about entities that could literally take down Bill Cipher in an instant. Thousands of years prior to the events of the Owl House, the Archivists and the Titans, powerful beings who inhabited the Boiling Isles, were at war with each other. The Owl House's lore is actually the most complex out of all four of these series, so bear with me. The Archivists, also known as the Collectors, were a race of celestial beings dedicated to collecting certain species to make sure that they wouldn't go extinct, which in concept sounds great, except they'd wage war upon those who decided to interfere with their plans. Once a couple of the Collectors learned that the Titans wielded abilities powerful enough to cancel out their own magic, they weren't very happy to say the least. During the war between the Archivists and the Titans, the youngest of the Archivists, also known as the Collector, was imprisoned inside of a tablet by one of the Boiling Isles' Titans. The Collector was described as being trapped within a world in between dimensions, a gap if you will. It seems identical to the Nightmare Realm where if you recall, Bill Cipher was trapped in for centuries. If Gravity Falls and the Owl House truly share a universe, then it literally has to be the same dimension. Realistically speaking, there can't be more than one lawless gap in between worlds here. When Bill Cipher was first summoned by Gideon into Gravity Falls, he escaped the Nightmare Realm but got stuck inside of a new prison called the Dreamscape. This is basically where we encounter Bill throughout most of Gravity Falls until he tricks Mabel into freeing him into the third dimension prior to the events of Wedmageddon. That's all of the backstory from these four shows that are relevant to our discussion, but the question remains, does all of their lore fit cleanly together? Well, it's about time that we put the Disney Cartoon Multiverse on trial to see if it really holds up. Trillions of years prior to the events of Gravity Falls, Bill Cipher is born in the second dimension and although he tolerated his flat existence for as long as he could, he eventually grew bored of his world and decided to liberate it by eliminating all of its inhabitants. Bill Cipher would soon make his way into Dimension Zero where he would get stuck for a few centuries. At the same time, someone already imprisoned within the same dimension called the Collector would be serving his time with no hope of ever being released. Bill Cipher on the other hand would escape into the dreamscape through the help of Gideon during the summer of 2012. Now as far as Bill Cipher was concerned, the dreamscape was still a prison, a place that only kept him from achieving his one true goal which was to seize control over the multiverse. After tricking Mabel Pines into releasing him from the dreamscape into the third dimension, Bill Cipher would eventually meet his fate after underestimating the residents of Gravity Falls. A few years after Bill Cipher's defeat, a young girl from another universe entirely named Star Butterfly would kickstart her magic journey in her dimension called Muni during the summer of 2014. After facing and defeating all of the most powerful enemies from her world, Star Butterfly would permanently fuse her dimension of Muni with her universe's version of Earth. 
five years after the events that transpired in Star's universe, four girls would begin their journeys at roughly the same time. Anne Bonjoy, Sasha Waybright, Marcy Wu, and Luz No Seda. The former three girls would stumble upon a mystical artifact called the Calamity Box that would suck all three of them into its home dimension, kickstarting their respective magical journeys within Amphibia. Luz No Seda, after running away from home, would find her way into another dimension as well, except the dimension that Luz found herself in, called the Boiling Isles, was home to the most powerful known entities in their universe. While Bill Cipher wielded incredible levels of power, he was always held back by something, but the Titans and Archivists never faced the same issues. Long story short, if any of these guys ever found themselves on Earth, it'd be literally over for humanity and the known outer world within seconds. While Anne, Sasha, and Marcy dealt with the threat of a universal invasion by defeating King Andreas and the core on Earth, Luz would face off against Emperor Bellos within the mysterious dimension of the Boiling Isles itself. And Sasha and Marcy would return home after ensuring the safety of their friends in Amphibia, and Luz would soon follow, missing the epic battle that occurred only a few months earlier in California. Check out this next video where I reveal the identity of Disney's smartest villain from the cartoon multiverse. I promise this one will shock you. Thanks for watching, take care.